Why hello everybody, this is Christy with The Painted Gardener and today I'm going to show you how I map out my garden. And I am actually going to be doing this on watercolor because I, as The Painted Gardener, am going to be painting this after I do it. So if anybody wants to follow along, go ahead and get a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, and a ruler because as you can see here, I decided that in order for this to be straight and nice looking, you need a ruler to get those nice lines. And a word of advice, you do not need to be an artist in order to do mapping. This is a very linear, a very boxy uh, way of doing all of this. And unless you are somebody who's going to be doing a very elaborate garden, you won't need anything else but boxes, whether it's a container garden, a raised bed garden, in ground or above ground, most of the time it is always going to be a square or a box of some sort that you're using. So a ruler and a pencil and an eraser is perfect. So I have the back of my house, which is where my garden lives, and I have put up my greenhouse, which is something that I use every season and I am putting up my raised garden beds. I have seven raised garden beds. I have made all of them myself. I have made them six foot by four foot for two of them and then eight foot by four foot for another two of them. I have two containers which are one foot uh, cubic foot and then I have two window frames that I'm using which are two foot by three foot and then one more raised garden bed inside my greenhouse that I'll be putting in at the end. And it is two feet wide and eight feet long. And as you can see, I'm using the centimeter side of the ruler because for every foot, I'm putting one centimeter. And it's just a nice scale for me to use so I can adjust all of my square footage down to a smaller size but still be within ratio. So for every square centimeter on my box is going to be a square foot in my garden. Perfect for making sure that I know how big I need of spacing for my seeds. So I highly recommend if you're going to be doing something like this, especially on either big or small paper, do centimeters because they are more compact and they are a lot more forgiving than inches are. So next, I'm going to be putting the finishing touches inside my greenhouse. And I understand that greenhouses, a lot of people have shelves in there and sometimes it's multiple shelves like mine. So you're not going to be able to get everything in there like you would a garden box or a different method of gardening but do the best that you can for this 2d picture and if you would like to do a better job of mapping out your greenhouse specifically I would definitely suggest doing an entire 3d picture of your greenhouse and optimizing the space by just square footing it out like the rest of your garden. For me, I am doing a little bit of different sizing in here because I have uh, five tomatoes that I'm growing in that uh, garden box and it's 16 inches compared to my eight footer by four footer which is going to be one square foot for each tomato. So as you can see, I am labeling every side. I am making sure that I have the footage on the map. So again, that I know how big my raised beds are. And now I'm gritting everything out like I was talking about earlier. And again, it is going to be one centimeter for every foot. So I'm getting the most accurate count of spacing that I have. So I have gritted it out. I'm gonna do that for every one of those and you don't have to do that if you feel like you are confident enough to know the spacing for what you have then you definitely don't need to do this but for people who like organization or enjoy the structure of it like I do go ahead and grid it out 
It's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle later. Promise. Well, actually, as you're gonna about to see. All right. And now we have most of the gridding done and we are starting to label. So I have two strawberry patches. One is the four foot by eight foot and then the other one is a different strawberry patch because it has different strawberries. Uh, I have an insane amount of tomato plants that I decided to grow and for this one I'm abbreviating it because you cannot stuff an entire word in a one centimeter square. So my uh, reference for me is a shorthand version, an abbreviated version, which is just a single T and then the first letter of the color or the kind of tomato. And this is for every kind of plant that has a variant. So red Russian kale is a K with an R. Uh, spaghetti squash is going to be an abbreviated version of it. Zucchini is just a giant Z and a cucumber is a giant C with a little U because at the end of the day as long as you know your abbreviations or your shorthand that's all that matters when it comes to mapping it out. And there we go. Now that everything has been mapped out, drawn out, gridded, and labeled. This is all you need to do for a regular map. But if you wanna go the extra mile and do what I'm about to do, which is paint it, cause it, in my opinion, would look so much better, go right ahead and do it. If not, just enjoy the rest of this. I'm going to be painting this and making it look pretty. For everybody else who's happy with their map, I hope this is a next step into your garden desires, and I hope you have a wonderful day. This is Christy with The Painted Gardener. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Christy out. Bye, guys.